Okay, so I'm sure at this point you guys might be wondering, Jake, how many times are you going to keep coming out of your garage at the beginning of each video? Well, at this point, it's countless on how many times I've done it, and I'm very uncertain on how many times I'm going to do it, because let's just be honest, it's so dope starting a video that way. Anyway, today's video is going to start with a quick mission to a site that we haven't seen in quite some time, so enough talking. Let's go. Like a bolt of lightning You appear from nowhere And now I can't remember The time from before Check it out. My uncle's house my uncle's lawn. Let's take a look at the lawn, see what it looks like after about, I don't know, five, six months since last time? Yeah, it's been a while. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the front lawn here. You can see not really much to uh, unveil here besides the density of the turf because it's still dormant. Now, albeit it is waking up a little bit, but it's still pretty dormant, right? So we're not really here to look at any progression as far as the uh, overall vigor of the turf, but we just want to take a look at it and see what it's looking like after, I don't know, about six months of just sitting. So front lawn here, you can see looking pretty good. Now, I will say density has improved little bit in here now we get down here and look we still do have a couple of broadleaf weeds in here that we have to deal with um, and then another one which we're going to be talking about today is crabgrass but that'll be coming up in a minute here and you can see get down here again got some got some green starting to show up in here so good sign and then making our way around to the back over here you guys don't remember by the way who've been watching the front lawn, we went ahead and seeded with a Kentucky bluegrass ryegrass mix, mostly those two varieties. And then back here, we seeded with a solid turf type tall fescue blend. And I gotta say, again, while the lawn is not really awake here, it's definitely much thicker. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. You can see, got a little bit of growth on it because we didn't really come out here and give it a formal last cut, but it's definitely looking looking pretty good we get down here and look at it again you can see much much thicker and way more dense compared to last fall now I'll probably have to come back here at some point again once we get a little greener and things start waking up a little bit and I actually have to mow this I'll have to come back here and show you guys what it's gonna look like uh, once it wakes up because once the lawn wakes up that's really gonna tell us how much progress has been made but anyway you could see um, this is why I've been putting off showing you guys this lawn because of the fact that, again, it's dormant. There's not really a whole lot to see, but albeit it's definitely looking much thicker and way more dense than it ever has when I started. Here's a couple of before and after shots to show you what I'm talking about. What's going on everybody? I'm Jake the Long Kid. Welcome back to yet another video. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about crabgrass pre-emergence. More specifically, what is a crabgrass pre-emergent? And with that, we're also going to be talking about how and when to apply them. So with all that being said, let's get into the video. Hey, what's going on everybody? Present day Jake here, editing the video right now. Just wanted to hop in here and give you a little context. As you saw in the title of this video, today we're gonna to be primarily talking about crabgrass pre-emergence, what they are, when to apply them, how to apply them. Pretty much all the frequently asked questions I get about pre-emergence are going to be within today's video. So, ton of information for you guys today. So, 
that's clear, but I want to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of context as to why I showed my uncle's lawn. Now, the primary reason I showed that lawn was not just to show it to you, because albeit I haven't showed it to you in a long time, but the reason I wanted to show you guys that lawn and how it's doing today is because that's the lawn that we're going to be demoing a pre-emergent application on today, just to give you a general idea of how things work and how things are done, all that stuff anyway, just to give you a visual there. But uh, if I'm going to be honest here while I'm talking with you, um, as far as dates go at the time I filmed the application, we're a little bit on the early edge of what I would consider best practice, which you're going to hear me touch on the video as well. But with, with what's going on in the world today, I'm not really going to touch on it because everyone knows. It's really a scenario of let me get it done while I can get it done as it is down the road. And well, you guys know, you guys know what's going on. but. All I could say is we're in this together and the only way around it is if we're smart. Yeah, that's all I wanted to do here. Just touch it, just touch base with you guys, give you guys a little context and uh, yeah, back to the video. Okay, so the first question I'm going to get is what is a pre-emergent? Basically what a pre-emergent is, is it's a root pruner. And what that means is when you apply a crabgrass pre-emergent to your yard, it's going to form a vapor barrier at the soil surface. And what that vapor barrier is going to specialize in is preventing any new crabgrass growth from coming up into the spring. And with that, it can also prevent the growth of other things such as fresh grass seed. Hence the reason I actually don't recommend any of you guys seed in the spring. If you guys want, I'll actually leave a link here in the eye in the top right corner as well as a link in the description below to a video I did last year where I talked all about spring seeding comparing that to a crabgrass pre-emergent and why I personally believe that you should consider just doing a pre-emergent and saving the seed for the fall. Again, all that information will be in that video linked right here and down below as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about timing. When is the best time to put down our crabgrass pre-emergent? There are two best times that I would consider the best to apply your pre-emergent. The first best time being right when soil temperatures hit 55 degrees. At this point, the crabgrass plants are days away from emerging at the soil surface, so this is a great time to get down that barrier and get and get a dead-on kill below the surface before the crabgrass presents itself a problem. So in a perfect world, this is what everybody would want to do. Now, an alternative to that would be to do what my buddy Alan Hayne, the lawn care nut, has coined the leading up to strategy, which basically means that you apply your crabgrass pre-emergent three to four weeks before. Now, in order for you guys to understand this, I need to go ahead and provide a little more clarity. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and hop on the computer here, whoop, and then I'll hop on an online resource that I'm sure all of you guys have heard of, and I'll show you guys how to gauge, the, and I'll show you guys how to gauge the best time to get down your pre-emergent leading up to that optimum time where soil temperatures hit 55 degrees. All right, everybody, so I'm at my desk right now, and on my computer screen, I have pulled up by far one of my favorite online resources for checking soil temperatures, seeing where they're at right now, as well as where they have reached historically in the past. It's a very insightful program. It's called Greencast Soil Temperatures. Now, for those of you guys who want to check it out, I'll leave the link down in the description below. Very cool piece of software here. So when you look at it, you can see the layout here is very simple. Like we have location search. This will allow us to, you know, look up our city and state and stuff. And then that'll lead us down to these bars right here, which will give us average is today's average uh, where the soil temperatures are peaking in the middle of the day five-year average telling us where uh, soil temperatures have historically reached on a certain day and then the 10-year average is the same as the five-year only only difference being 10-year average right so you could see numbers are very similar albeit a little different as well and then down here we have the calendar which allows us to go forward and back as we please which is pretty cool and then with that we also have a geographical map here that'll give us a live reading of the soil temperatures and the location that we're checking out live and in real time. So very cool, insightful piece of software here. When we're starting out here, there's two things we need to look for. The first thing is we need to figure out when the soil temperatures are going to peak at 55. So like I said earlier, when soil temperatures hit 55 in the middle of the day. So there are two different ways you could do this. Number one, you could take a meat thermometer like I've talked about in the past, stick it in a couple of places in the sun and shade areas in the middle of the day and uh, see when soil temperatures are hitting 55. Once they hit 55 in the middle of the day, good to go. 
And then another thing you could do if you don't want to do that, again, is you could pull up this and you could look at today's average. Once you notice it hitting 55, then you know that you're in the window to go ahead and get this application done. So I really can't trust the dates this year because they haven't happened yet. So I'm going to go a little, I'm going to go back in time a little bit and look at dates ahead that way, see where they were at last year. That'll give me a reading of, you know, how things are going to go this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to like April, let's say April 6th here, right? You could see April 6th. Um, when I look at today's average, you could see, uh, albeit it's not 55, but very, very close, right? So I'll take that 51 degrees, temperatures are hitting in the middle of the day, so very good. So I've got my first day down, now I need to figure out the second day when they historically hit and remain at 55 degrees. So what I need to do here is pay attention to the five-year average. The five-year average, as I mentioned, is going to tell me where the temperatures hit on in the past five years on the surface. Certain day. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little further ahead again. You want to make sure you're a year. You want to make sure that you're a year back on this one because you can't go that far ahead in the current year. So I like to go back to last year, 2019. So let's go a little further ahead, April 20th. And you can see now we got something. The five-year average temperatures are around 53.6. So what that tells me is that in the past five years, on this date, that's when the soil temperatures have hit around 55 degrees. So we're good to go. We're in that window. So in a nutshell, once you figured out these two dates, when the soil temperatures um, peak 55, as well as when they have historically hit 55, then you know that you're in the window to get this application done. Okay, so now that we know what a pre-emergent is and when to apply it, let's go ahead and talk about how to apply it because this is a common question that all of you guys are going to ask right now. Jake, how do I apply a pre-emergent? Well, in my opinion, that really depends on the product and the strategy that you're going about, right? Good example of that would be the product, right? Is it liquid or is it granular? That's going to play a big role in it. The strategy you're going to be using, are you going to be doing one full app at the beginning of the season or are you going to do two split apps, uh, which will give you the same amount of residual, but you're applying half one time and half another time later on in the season, right? Once you determine all of that, that's going to give you a little bit of clarity and provide you a roadmap to get you going here in the season. So a good example of that would be my scenario here. I'm going to be applying a granular product, more specifically this 007 Prodiamine product, which if you want to pick some of that up, I'll leave a link down in the description below where you could get that. And we're going to be doing two split app applications. Now personally, I recommend all of you guys who are beginners or really anybody in general who's a homeowner and who has control over this, I recommend you do the split app strategy, meaning you do one right now and then you do a second application providing the second half residual later on down the road, mainly because it's going to act as a safety net. If you come out the ground running hard with that full app of, of pre-emergent application, maybe it's a little early, maybe you don't do something right in the application, you hold the risk of losing a majority of the efficacy within that first application. Whereas if you do two split apps, meaning you do first half now second half later you're going you're going to provide yourself a bit of a safety net right because if something goes wrong in that first application which let's be real applying in the spring there's always a lot of risk and uncertainty with the weather that can ruin it it's good to know that you have that second application as also known as that safety net that you'll do later on that will repair any of the uh, dividends that you had to pay with your first application makes sense right it kind of acts as a safety net as you will so back to it again I'm going to be applying this OOC Seven, and I'm going to be doing a split application and that's going to require me to apply this product at three pounds per thousand for this first application here going out the gate. Okay, so bonus segment. Now this one is actually going to stem off of, off of a video I did last week where I went a little in depth on the air rate product and I also talked about and demonstrated an application that you could do right now to get the lawn ready for the spring push that is coming in a few weeks just to get things in the soil optimized to the best of their ability. As a matter of fact, if you guys want to check out that video, I will leave it here in the eye in the top right corner as well as linked in the description below. So anyway, one question I get all the time is Jake, can I apply my liquid air rate with my pre-emergent. I understand the apprehension behind applying these two together because in the past when I would recommend mechanical aeration, I often told you that if you are going to commit to mechanical aeration, you cannot put down a pre-emergent synergistically with it because the two modes of action from the two processes will interfere with one another. So to explain what I mean by that in the past, what we told you is when you have the pre-emergent creating the barrier and the aeration that is poking holes in the ground, you're actually ruining that pre-emergent barrier, which makes your pre-emergent pretty much 
useless at that point. So it's not a good idea to do those two together. But now, my friends, you don't have to worry about that when you're applying the liquid aerate product because the two processes and the two modes of actions in both of the products are not going to interfere with one another. So to explain what I mean, you have the pre-emergent that we applied that's going to be forming that vapor at the soil surface, whereas on the contrary, the aerate product is going to focus on diving down deep and opening up those air pockets to make more room for air, water, and nutrient penetration as well as more surface area for new root growth. So you don't have to worry about the two products interfering with one another as the pre-emergent is more geared toward working on the soil surface and the aerate product is more geared toward diving down deep and optimizing the soil to the best of its ability to make more room for more root growth that we're gonna be pushing later on. So in a nutshell, to answer your question, if you do wanna put some aerate down with your pre-emergent because I know spring aeration can be quite beneficial, Knock yourself out. The two products are not going to interfere with one another, so you're good to go. Okay, so once you've done all your applications, one question I'm gonna get is going to be, Jake, should, what should I do after the application? Well, at this point, you don't, you don't really have to do much, but just make sure that your application gets watered in. Now, this is where I actually highly recommend you work with Mother Nature, especially this time of the year where it's not officially spring yet, the weather's still fluctuating, so make sure that you plan accordingly with Mother Nature and make sure that you can get your application done within hours before um, a rainstorm comes in, or a light rain at least, right? because the idea is we want to get these products watered in as they're both geared toward the soil. We need to activate that barrier with the pre-emergent and then with that we also need to get the aerate product down into the soil so that again it could start doing its job and opening that soil up for more root growth later on. So make sure you time it perfectly with mother nature so that you get a nice rain coming in within hours of the application and you should be fine. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did please leave a like, leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought about it, ask any questions, I love engaging with you guys. It's what makes this community cool and fun. And then with that, subscribe to the channel as I have a ton of content coming up this season where I'm going to be showing you guys how to get the deepest, darkest, greenest, thickest lawn on the block. I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, your lawn is going to be dominated. See you later. What's going on everybody? I am currently in front of my garage right now. Little bonus segment in the video here. I am currently drinking my morning coffee. Black, you guys know I love it. <sighs> love black. Anyway, I wanted to come on here for a little bonus segment because I want to give you guys a little update on the chain of events that have happened here in the past couple of days. So as you guys have seen, I've gotten a couple of applications done at my uncle's house. We got down our pre-emergent and we also went ahead and put down some next air rate and we also did it in the rain which allowed it to get watered in as we were doing the application. So all good there. But then here we are a couple of days later and this happens. So anyway, this isn't really something that surprises me or freaks me out. As a matter of fact, this is pretty much the norm nowadays and it's what my buddy Jimmy Lewis has actually coined teasing season right the temperatures are trending up in the spring they're in the 50s they're in the 60s they're in the 70s they're trending up you get in that spring adrenaline rush you finally get outside and do something and then a couple of days later this happens so yeah anyway 
The reason I wanted to bring this up is because this is going to bring up a common question that I get for those who've, who've had no choice but to get their application done sooner than never, kind of like I did. A lot of people are going to ask questions like, Jake, if I put down my pre-emergent and it snowed a couple of days later, do I need to consider reapplication? And my friends, the answer is no. You see, this is a situation where being safe is better than sorry. And when I say that, what I mean is that when you put down a pre-emergent product like Prodiamine, there's a max maximum per application that you have to abide by and if you exceed that maximum at any point in time you hold the risk of imposing more problems in your lawn and landscape so it's not a risk you should take at this point you should just trust the process of the first application do that and you should be fine so if you did apply the pre-emergent and you got a snow a couple of days later this is not something to stress about as a matter of fact it's kind of a positive. It's better than applying and letting them sit in the sun for a couple of days if they didn't get watered in because you have two things that are going to happen. Number one, the pellets that are down right now, they're being covered. The snow's covering them. And then number two, once the snow melts, the snow's actually going to aid in watering them in so that they can activate that barrier. So you're good to go. But I wanted to go ahead and take this time to preface another thing I talked about in the video here, and that is split applications, right? Doing one application now and doing the other half of that application later. It's that safety net that we talked about earlier that will aid in times of uncertainty like this, right? If you feel that this application isn't going to work, here's what I'd recommend. Trust the process of the first application and just know that whatever doesn't work out, you could come in and fix with that second application that we're going to be talking about later on this season. All right, so this is where we officially part ways. Now, I can't really do too much in the lawn to close this video out, but it makes for some great Instagram opportunities. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. camera's rolling let's get this done so got my notes right here I've already kind of ran through it so now I'm getting an idea like I'm already waking up I'm gonna go ahead and do this again as well <laughs> all right that should work Okay, so now let's talk about timing. When is the best time to apply our pre-emergent now my friends that depends on where you're at Nope, that's wrong. That's wrong entirely. Let me take a drink of coffee here get re reinvigorated, right? Ah, Pete's coffee, very good. Fescue Freddy, thank you, brother. Enjoying the Pete's. At this point, at this point, the gra and show you guys how that works. Now, before we go any further, I myself need to go ahead and illustrate it for you in this video because I haven't done it in a while. I need to refresh myself on it. Ooh, it's invigorating. That's invigorating. That's good. It's good stuff. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. I always forget to do that, you know, I gotta shoo, keep it good. What happens is you form a vapor barrier at the soil surface, which will then, is you form a, uh, is you form a vapor barrier at the soil surface. Now oh, I gotta stop, man. What am I doing? Already I'm losing. Oh my God. Brah. Come on, brah. Take another sip of coffee. <sighs> okay. Coffee's gone. Gotta finish this up. <laughs> 